Good morning, Grade Eights, and welcome back to Worksheet Cloud. This is Grade Eight English. I'm Mrs. Goslett, and if you have a question during the lesson, please send an email with your question to Grade Eight at WorksheetCloud.com. Hello. Now, when I hear hello, I always think of the Adele song, so we have to start with some of her good music. Are you ready? Hello from the other side. At least I can say that I've tried to tell you I'm sorry for making you work. Yeah, I'm making you work today, Grade Eights. So if you can grab that notebook and pen, that would be fantastic. If you joined me yesterday, we did visual literacy advertising and we learned all about the aspects of how to analyze an advert. Today, we will be looking at cartoons. Cartoons. A cartoon is a picture which is drawn so that a great deal of information is given in a small space. Some cartoons are used to show political and social trends. They are often accompanied by a caption or a title or an explanation. And this is used to just tell us more information. So if we can't get it in just the picture, we need to know more. Now cartoon, why? So what is the intention? So for us, we're going to look at, does the cartoon aim to entertain, educate, or satirize? So sometimes a cartoon is just there to be funny. It's just, it's not going to educate us, it's not going to tell us more. So we're going to have a look at these. Always ask yourself this question, especially when you're being tested. Has the cartoonist achieved this objective? Now, so many of my grade eights will tell me, but ma'am, this cartoon is not funny. And the whole point of the cartoon was to create humor. So we're going to look at humor. Later on, we're going to look at satire, we're going to look at irony, we're going to look at all the different features. But we are going to make you experts at analyzing cartoons. So for the cartoons, they need the character or whoever's speaking to use a speech bubble. Now this is the thinking one, this is the speaking one, and this is the shouting one. So speech bubble refers to the shape above the character's head where the speech, I apologize for my typo, it's not Oz, it is written. Right, so we were talking about humor. So artists or cartoon artists often use humor to communicate their point. They force the viewer to laugh at themselves or at the situation. So here's an example. So it looks like Snoopy is outside. And he says, all right, let's see what we have here for our evening meal. So what do we have, guys? And then he says, I brought the hot dogs. Woodstock brought the buns. So they're listing what each person's brought. Conrad bought the must, uh, brought, sorry, the mustard. Bill brought the catsup. Now, can you see they used a device here, catsup. It's supposed to be something else. And this is actually called a malapropism. So, it's supposed to be ketchup, the tomato sauce. And lastly, we can see Snoopy saying, and Oliver brought the TV guide. Now, this is supposed to be funny. Ha, 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 Oliver, you're so silly. So, they're outside. What's he going to do with the TV guide? They can't go and just put up a TV and, and look. Okay, guys, let's look. What's in the TV guide so we can watch outside? No, and that just takes away from camping or 
It looks like a, almost like a Girl Scouts, Guy Scout, that type of thing. Scouting. To be in the outdoors. So you don't need a TV guide. They thought he'd bring, you know, food or drinks or something else. So this cartoonist is trying to be funny. So it's supposed to be humorous. On a tester exam, they will be very specific. So as you can see, this is called frame one. This is frame two. This is frame three. And this is frame four. So they'll definitely ask you to look at frame four and to explain the humor. Here's another one which will relate to our time now. Fairy tales in pandemic time. So we know that the traditional fairy tale, if the princess is sleeping or she's uh, poison has been, something bad's happened to her, how do we wake her up from the spell? We give her a kiss. Well, the prince has to give her a kiss. And now, with coronavirus, you can't go near her. So all the doctors, or we, <laughs> Snoopy, uh, what do you call them? The, um, I want to say the three wise men, but that's not relevant. Um, the dwarves. Look at me losing track of my Snow White and the seven dwarves. Okay. So here are the dwarves. And they are telling the prince... No, 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 you can't kiss her. Okay, so they're just trying to make light, trying to make fun, and we're trying to have a good laugh in a serious time, which we'll get to just now. It's also called satire. But it's supposed to be funny. Then labeling. Sometimes the cartoonist labels, if you can look at the cartoon for me, on this man's chest, it's got USA, so he's representing a country, and this lady is representing the FDA. Now, if you don't know what the FDA is, it stands for Food and Drug Administration. So they are responsible for testing food, and obviously if people are taking drugs. So this... Let's see what this man says. You don't have enough inspectors, so you don't really know if my food is safe. Just take a bite then, we'll know. So she is testing him at pretty much America. Okay. Let's see what labeling says. The cartoonist will often label people, so that's what they've done here, or objects in a cartoon to make sure the viewer clearly understands them. Facial expression. Now, this is so important. In a test or whenever analyzing a cartoon, they love to ask this question. And it's really simple and basic. And most of the time, my grade get tricked because they're very specific. They won't say facial expression and body language. Because if you do, let's just look at the first one. If they ask you, what is his facial expression? You can't mention his hands because his hands, that's a body gesture. That's a body, that's body language. So you have to look at the face. What is the face telling you? So he's sticking his tongue out. So you've got to say, tongue is sticking out, eyes are closed. And then obviously what the emotion is. So let's look at this one. What would you say his facial expression is? So, he looks quite bored or tired. How do we know this? And now you give the facial expression. His mouth is wide open or in a yawning manner. And his eyes are half open. Or well, they're closed a little bit. And that shows us that he's bored or tired. Let's go to a more expressive one. Okay, This one looks like he's terrified or shocked or surprised. How do we know this? Now we're going to explain the facial expression. Remember, hands, body language. So we're not even going to mention that. So we're going to look at his mouth and his eyes. 
Okay, so his mouth is wide open. His eyes are also enlarged, um, really big. Um, and this is supposed to show us that he's terrified. Okay. Then this last one, he looks like he's just being a bit silly. But what would his facial expression be? Again, you're going to refer to his mouth and his tongue. Because his hands are... That's all part of body language. Okay. Body language. Now this is also very important. And they also, we love to test this. So facial expression and body language. So how do we know someone is upset? How do we know someone is angry? We look at their body language. And body language can give you a lot of guidance for that. So body language is the positioning of a person that provides non-verbal clues about their mood or their attitude. So sometimes in class, your body language conveys a lot about yourself. So if you sit on your desk like this, let's go here, you don't look very interested. You probably aren't. If you put cross your arms and then you put your head on your desk and you close your eyes. Mm. It shows me you stayed up all night playing video games or watching Netflix. Or you might have had an early morning training session and you just can't stay awake during my lesson. Which is okay, I understand, but next time you can't do it. So you can see this man, his head is on the table, his eyes are closed, his arms are slouched down. It doesn't even look like he's awake so he's not interested he's tired he is not interested in the lady sitting opposite him and let's look what she has to say your body language says you've lost interest okay if you were sitting upright like you do in class and if you raise your hand and you're interested and your eyes are on the teacher that shows you're interested in learning and excited He's not any of those. So let's look at this. Can you grab your um, piece of paper and pen? We're going to do this. Please will you look at frame two for me? I want you to please give the um, body language or what he's doing there. And then this last frame, frame three. Explain their emotion, their body language, and their facial expression. Pause this, write it down, and then come back to me. Right, let's look at it. Well, let's check my calendar and see what our schedule is for today. Today says, do nothing. So does tomorrow, and every day after, all the way through the end of August. I like this itinerary. Let's get right to it. So Calvin and Hobbes are super excited. See the explanation mark? They are so excited to get this going. So let's see what you said and what I said. Let's put me over there. Frame two. Whoops. Frame two, if we look at Calvin, he looks quite... Um, focused so he's staring intently at his notepad you can see here there's a little bit of a line a little bit difficult to spot two little lines and that's his eyebrow, his eyebrows are raised and his mouth is slightly open okay so you can also maybe focus on his eyes they are staring they focused in on his notepad and then if we look at frame three, I asked you to explain the emotion. The emotion is joy, happiness, excitement. And then I asked you to give me some body language. So how do we know they are excited? Um, he's leaping off the stairs, jumping. He, um, Calvin Hobbes is in a running stance. So they're very excited to get onto doing nothing and doing whatever they want, playing. And now we look at the um, facial features. So his mouth is open in maybe a smile way. 
wide open, he's got a smile, they're excited, and obviously we spoke about their body language, which was running and jumping, which expresses the excitement. Irony. This is quite an intricate one, and they love asking it. So if you can remember this, this would be great. So irony is when one thing is said, but something else is meant. So let's have a look at this cartoon. The cat has brought in a bird, dead bird, because it's in his mouth and we're going to expect that. And this lady has her hand in maybe a turkey or a really big chicken, but I think it's a turkey. And normally, you know, you get the stuffing from the inside. And she's also got a dead bird. And look what she says to the cat. How gross. Get that dead thing out of my kitchen. Now, this is ironic because she has a dead bird in her kitchen. And she's telling the poor cat who also just brought a dead bird home. Okay. So, hopefully you understand that. Let's look here. You can pause the screen and I want you to identify and just explain what is ironic about this cartoon. Right, I hope you got it. So we look at the top and it says campgrounds, cabins, tents. My family wants a genuine, back to nature camping experience. So he wants to go to a lovely camping ground where you rough it. Now when you're normally roughing it you don't have ablutions but nowadays a lot of campsites have ablutions where there's this nice clean toilet and you get a little electricity box and you can plug maybe your caravan in there and then you can use a fridge for electricity but that's pretty much it or kettle. So camping is not luxurious. Camping doesn't have all the things a house has. So then he says, but with Wi-Fi, air conditioning and satellite TV. Now these, this is all, that's luxury. You can't get an air con in a tent or a caravan. It would be lovely, but that's more like glamping or going to a hotel and just, yeah, it's not camping. So he it's ironic because he doesn't really want a genuine back to nature camping experience. He wants to say he's probably gone camping, but he wants the Wi Fi, the aircon, and the satellite TV. Another one is a pun, and a pun is a play on words. And if you can remember that explanation, it'll be a great help. A joke exploiting the different possible meanings of a word or the fact. That there are words which sound alike but have different meanings. So if we look at this cartoon, we have the policeman and they have come to question this patient. So something, an incident might have happened and they just want to get a statement finding out what happened. So they are portrayed as question marks, which is a punctuation mark, and they say, we're here to question Mark. So the patient's name is Mark, but the pun is the question mark. So they're playing on the words and they've got that punctuation mark. And now they carry it through the cartoon. So the doctor says, I'm sorry, but he slipped into a comma. Get it? Comma. Coma? Oh, okay, it's supposed to be funny. Hopefully you laughed. Ha ha ha. There's the comma, and there um, he's supposed to be in a coma. So the play on the word there is comma, coma. Hopefully you found that quite funny. Here's another pun. So it's the play on the French fries, and the waiter brought him French flies. Okay, so the man wanted chips or fries, but the waiter misinterpreted and gave him flies. So there was a misinterpretation of the word fries and flies. 
satire. Now this is when you use a very light or trying to make it light and funny. So you use humor to make a serious point. It involves using wit, irony or sarcasm to highlight human vices, our faults and flaws. So when we think about murder and guns, it's a serious situation. So let's look at this cartoon. They're watching the news and it's talking about school massacres. Guns cause all of this trouble. So the parents are outraged, so upset because guns are violent and they're causing murder. Now you have the kid, their child, playing a video game. His whole role in this video game is to go and murder people, to kill. And he's shouting, kill them, kill them, kill them all. Okay, so that's satire where they're trying to show you that guns are bad. But look at how we just allow our children to play these violent video games. Okay, so it's supposed to be funny, but it's quite a serious situation or serious thing. Here's another example of satire. So we have these children in a classroom and the teacher asks them, Children, what do you want to be when you grow up? Now the normal reaction or the normal answer would be, um, you know, like a vet or a lawyer or a doctor or a mechanic or a plumber, it doesn't matter. A teacher, it doesn't matter. And now we have in South Africa, they just want to be alive. And so they are mocking that our country is dangerous. Our country has a very high crime rate. So they are mocking or making fun of South Africa and how dangerous it is and how children just want to live till the next day. Okay. And that's quite sad. You should have dreams, not worrying about that. Stereotypes, this is quite important. So this is an exaggerated preconceived generalization about the typical behavior, attitudes, dress, etc. of various types of people. So you all know, we've all heard that one where they say, oh, you throw like a girl. So it's supposed to be an insult. Some girls can throw really well, so it's not all the girls, but it's just a stereotype. Another stereotype is all blondes are dumb, all blondes are dumb. Let's look at this cartoon. Melanie Smith, CEO. Now, CEO, that's a big deal. You are in charge of this company. And now it says, no, this is not Mel's secretary. This is Mel. So it's showing you the stereotype that women are not necessarily, or not, not CEOs, they should be the secretaries. So that's the stereotype there. A caricature, these are features or actions of a person exaggerated to help the reader work out who is being, sorry about that. Who is being represented. So here we have Barack Obama. So they really exaggerate their features. Yes, Angelina Jolie has big lips, but they've just made everything bigger. Okay. So frequently asked questions, as I told you, explain the humor. Okay, they'll ask you, why do you think it's funny? And you must explain it. How does the cartoonist co convey emotion through facial expression, body language, how is movement conveyed? So could be lines drawn, could be the actual running movement. And identify and explain irony or pun. So those are some of the questions that you could be asked. All right, grade eights. I hope that you had a lovely time with me. Before you go, let's recap quickly. So most importantly, facial expression, body language. Have a look, analyze it. Explain yourself clearly. Know what a pun is. It's a play on words, irony, satire, and humor. There are activities that you can do. And again, if you have any questions, please email grade8 at worksheetcloud.com. Now, we always do a little bit of motivation at the end. And my motivation for today is comes from Camp Rock. It's a movie about a girl who she changes herself to fit in with the it crowd. 
or yeah, she just changes herself to she thinks it's a better way. So this comes from there. This is real, and this is me. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be now. Gonna let the light shine on me. Now I found who I am. There's no way to hold it in. No more hiding who I want to be. This is me. So grade eights, don't be afraid of showing who you are. Be true to yourself and don't change for anyone else. I hope you had a lovely day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.